overtime. All right, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and on today's episode, we're going to try to fix both of the monitors in my Nintendo PlayChoice 10 dual monitor cabinet. Uh, so this is basically uh, the arcade version of an NES. Uh, it's got 10 game slots inside the machine for uh, uh, interchangeable cartridges. They're kind of like NES cartridges, although not exactly the same. Um, so you can keep switching the games uh, in the machine to keep uh, you know changing up the lineup. Uh, this is a, a cabinet that's kind of near and dear to me. I remember playing one of these uh, quite a lot growing up at a convenience store uh, really close to my house. Um, when I got it, both of the monitors were kind of acting up. I had to rebuild both of them, uh, including the top one. I had to replace the flyback. Uh, this game, this cabinet takes or, or comes with a couple different kinds of monitors. Mine has uh, a couple of Sharp uh, XM2001N monitors. Uh, sometimes you find these with uh, 20EZs or, or something similar to that. There's a slightly different uh, Sanyo monitor uh, that's different from the 20EZ that I can't remember. These uh, Sanyos, uh, or Sharps rather, when they're working great, uh, have a great uh, picture. One of the problems though is uh, the flybacks are notorious for going bad and um, they're hard to get a hold of. Uh, there are some modern uh, uh, reproductions, but uh, the last batch or so from most uh, vendors haven't been very good. Um, so like I said, that the top monitor, I did have to replace the flyback. Both of them got cap kits before uh, and worked great for a, a couple of years. Um, the lower monitor, you know, progressively was getting dimmer and dimmer. And what you're seeing right now is about as good as it gets. Uh, and even with the lights up, uh, I think the cam camera's playing a trick. It's actually shockingly dim. Uh, I know it looks like the flood, the, this um, screen pot and the flyback is turned up because it is. Uh, it's barely visible uh, to the naked eye uh, when the lights are out. Uh, when the lights are on, it's all washed out. So we're going to try rejuvenating that tube. I think that's what's going on with that one, and, and hopefully that'll fix it. With the top one, though, it's it's dead. Um, the way this game's, uh, game works, you know, you, you the gameplay is actually in the lower monitor. The top monitor has the menu for selecting the different game and different games and uh, has instructions on how to play. Um, so, like I said, I replaced the, the flyback on the top one before, uh, and what happened was I accidentally left this on for about 48 hours or so, uh, and when I came back and noticed that it was on, uh, the top monitor was kind of, you know, glitching out. Uh, turned it off, let it cool down, turned it back on, and immediately heard a pop um, and smelled some really bad burning plastic smell, so turned it off, and, uh, you know, that's potentially a characteristic sign of a blown a flyback, so... Uh, we'll try replacing the flyback uh, on that one. But first things first, let's get these monitors out of the cabinet and see what we're working with. Okay, I don't know if you saw it on camera, but uh, as I was taking one of those monitors out, I actually managed to nick my finger. So threw a Band-Aid on that. Uh, so we're back in business here. Um, you know, what can I say? This is <laughs> this can be a dangerous hobby sometimes. So something uh, not to joke about that is potentially very dangerous is messing with high voltage. Uh, so even with these uh, monitors off for long periods of time, the tubes can retain lots of voltage. 
Uh, so what you want to do before working on them is discharge them. Otherwise, you can potentially shock yourself uh, something fierce. So uh, these might actually be uh, self-discharging monitors. I'm not sure, but you know, to be safe, we'll go ahead and discharge them uh, ourselves. So a simple homemade tool for uh, discharging monitors is you know just a, a long uh, screwdriver um, with a wire and an alligator clip on the end, uh, and then you wrap uh, the bare wire around the metal part of the screwdriver, I'll wrap it around a bunch of times. I even soldered it on, uh, wrap a bunch of electrical tape on it. And basically what we want to do is uh, short uh, the anode, which is the uh, part of the flyback that connects to the, um, the tube, short that to the frame to discharge any potential um, uh, voltage that the tube has uh, uh, retained. So what you want to do is clip the alligator clip uh, to the chassis frame. Um, you want to put your off hand, your left hand, kind of behind your back or in your pocket, and then reach under the rubber uh, suction cup of the anode and try to make contact between, uh, there you go, do you hear that snap? Uh, you want to make contact between the screwdriver uh, and the metal clips underneath that uh, suction cup. Uh, move that around a bunch. Uh, all right, so that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the anode, pull that back, squeeze that to the side. It should, it should pop out. Come on. Sometimes it wants to be a, be a pain in the butt. There we go. So you see on the inside of that suction cup, we have these two little kind of like rabbit ear uh, clips. Uh, if you can see that, that uh, a contact uh, uh, inside the tube and deliver the high voltage. I'm gonna go ahead and just touch this again a couple times, just in case. So you won't always hear a snap, um, but the fact that we did uh, was good. So that, that's a good way to discharge uh, raster monitors. Uh, vector monitors, you don't wanna do that uh, because uh, you potentially damage the tube. So there's a, using a high voltage probe is a better way to uh, discharge a, a vector monitor. Maybe we'll do that together one day when we work on this Tempest here. So I'm going to go and do a, uh, go ahead and do this to the other monitor as well, even though this one's been off for a month or two now. Uh, it still could have a charge, so better safe than sorry. So clip the alligator clip uh, to the frame, get the screwdriver underneath to make contact. Uh, we're not getting a snap. All right, I think we're good. So we'll remove this the anode from this monitor. There we go. Uh, let's actually touch it a few more times while it's off, just in case. And I think we're good. So you didn't hear a snap on that one, which is fine. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Uh, but now we've got these monitors discharged and we can work on them safely. All right, so the flyback or the flyback transformer is the part of the uh, monitor chassis uh, that's directly connected to the tube through the anode. Uh, it's a high voltage component. And like I said, I think that's the one that's causing the problem on my upper monitor. Uh, I'm going to sort of uh, uh, expose um, uh, the pins on both of them so that I can uh, test them, test a known good one against a suspected bad one uh, for comparison before I go ahead and replace it. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, replacement flybacks, but again, this batch is sort of known for, I think, mostly being bad, so I have a few. Um, I've also got, uh, so there's a, a very similar monitors. Again, these are uh, Sharp XM uh, 2001N uh, monitors. Um, the sister monitor to those was found in the Nintendo Red Tent, the, the cocktail version of the Nintendo Versus system. Uh, I have two of those monitors. I have a working one in my uh, Donkey Kong Jr. cocktail. It's an 18-inch monitor. It's a Sharp XM uh, 1801N. And I also have a non-working uh, one of those uh, with a known good uh, tube and a, and a chassis that doesn't work. So I've got at least two flybacks. Uh, and the, you know, these, uh, the uh, 2001N and the 1801N use the, the, same, um, the same flyback. They're very similar monitors. One's a I believe a 20-inch uh, monitor, one's an 18-inch monitor, sort of oddball Nintendo sizes. 
Um, they have the same flyback, so I've got two known good ones, one suspected bad one, another likely bad one. I do have a, a known bad one that I didn't throw away, the old one last time, uh, and I've got some questionable replacements. So I'll be able to test all of them against each other. Uh, I've got this, this tool that's new to me. Uh, it's called the Blue Ring Tester for high Q inductive components from Anatech Instruments. Uh, this is actually a kit that I bought and had to put it together side of the components uh, onto the board. Um, this allows you to check um, uh, the coils of a flyback uh, to tell whether it's good or not, or if it's, you know, if it's good or there's a short or uh, um, you know, some other failure in the winding. So the flyback uh, is located here on the Sharp monitor. Uh, it's got two pots, uh, uh, one for uh, focus and one for screen, really for brightness. Uh, it's connected to the chassis via a, a horseshoe-shaped series of pins. Uh, and then obviously, like I said, uh, the anode uh, cup connects it uh, to uh, the monitor too. So um, one of the neat things about these sharp monitors is they have this kind of plate on the bottom to kind of uh, protect the, the solder side of the board so you don't uh, accidentally uh, touch it and shock yourself. So uh, we're going to remove this plate so that we can uh, take a look at these pins. One more at the top. So this plate kind of makes it a pain in the butt to remove the chassis to, for to recap it or, or any anything, but sort of makes it nice uh, to see what's going on. So let's uh, take a closer look here. So this uh, horseshoe shaped uh, configuration of pins here uh, is the uh, solder side of the flyback. Um, uh, if we can focus there, so. Uh, we're actually going to do a little research to get to figure out the pinout uh, of the of the sharp flyback to figure out where's the primary and secondary windings and the uh, the ground uh, for the uh, the anode. So uh, let me go ahead and and do that research and then we'll be ready to start testing. All right, before we can test the flyback uh, or flybacks, uh, we have to do a couple of things. We have to identify the pinout for the uh, primary and secondary uh, wirings, and we have to identify which pin is the ground uh, for the positive lead on the, the, uh, the anode. So in order to do this, I actually uh, found a video uh, that shows you how to identify this stuff with a multimeter. Uh, I'll link to it uh, uh, in the uh, video description, uh, but basically I've drawn the horseshoe pattern on a piece of paper, uh, numbered the pins one through 11, uh, just like they are on the solder side of the chassis board. I've got my digital multimeter set to uh, resistance, set to ohms, and we're going to measure the resistance for each pair uh, of pins uh, on the underside of the board. Like I said, I think you can do this in, in uh, circuit, so that's what we're going to do. So uh, the resistance between the first two pins, first two set of pins is 0.4 ohms. So we'll go ahead and Mark that down on the paper here, 0.4 ohms. Then between two and three is, that's jumping all over the place. Let's get a better reading here. All right, it's about three million ohms, three mega ohms. That seems a little high. All right, between Three and four is 0 0.5 ohms. All right. I'll go ahead and do the rest of these uh, off camera. All right, that was a bit trickier than I thought it would be and took longer than I expected. Um, so I was able to finally get uh, all those readings. Um, you know, measuring the resistance with my multimeter. A couple of these values are super high and would fluctuate between 3 million and 1 million. I think that just means uh, open uh, and actually saw pretty much the same on the suspected bad flyback. Maybe that's a artifact of trying to test this in circuit. Uh, but anyway, what we were looking for is uh, a pair of pins with a resistance as close as possible to one ohm. Turns out that's the last one, last pair that I measured here. Uh, between uh, pins 10 and 11, it was 1.1 ohms. All the rest were either you know, very low, 0 0.4 ohms, 
or around uh, 4,000 uh, ohms or 21,000 ohms. So I think that is our uh, primary winding right there. Okay, so the next step was to find uh, the ground for the positive lead on the anode. Again, following the video that I linked in the uh, video description, uh, this is something that I, I don't think is going to work uh, in circuit. So uh, again, following the video, I've got a couple of 9-volt batteries here. Uh, in series, I've got a black alligator clip uh, hooked up to the negative lead of the battery. That's connected to the negative lead of my multimeter. Uh, I've got the um, positive lead of the multimeter connected to the, uh, the anode. Um, I've got the multimeter on uh, DC volts, and no matter what, every single pin on the flyback horseshoe comes in around uh, 3.8 volts, um, which I don't think is right. Uh, I think we're looking for something around uh, 12 volts. Um, if I connect uh, these leads together directly, I get you know 19.3 volts, which I think is what I should be finding. So I'm guessing this is something that I uh, unfortunately cannot be doing uh, in circuit. So what we're going to do is actually test uh, one of the replacement flybacks because that's what I have out of uh, circuit. Uh, if you can see, this is an F1408CE. I got this from Paradise Arcade. They're really, I think, the only ones that have them in stock. Uh, Arcade Parts and Repair uh, stopped carrying them or, or stopped selling the batch that they had because they got so many bad ones. Um, I think Arcade Shop is sold out. Um, here's what we've got. Here's what we're looking at. Uh, brand new, um, uh, uh, you know, reproduction uh, flyback here. So since this is out of circuit, let's try testing uh, this one here. Hopefully you can still see it. Uh, I can't even really kind of prop it up. So uh, like the uh, video, the other video said, let's go ahead and connect the positive lead from the um, multimeter onto the anode cup, like so. And then the... Uh, the other alligator from the um, positive lead uh, of the battery to each of these in uh, in order. And basically we're looking for a bunch of zeros and then one that's, uh, you know, 12 volts or so. Okay, that zero, that's good. That's zero. That's about one volt, okay. That's about one volt about one volt, uh, zero, about one volt, that's uh, about five volts, about one volt, uh, zero volts, and zero volts. So does that mean this one, which is about five volts, uh, is the right one? So that's 11, 10, 9, 8. Is that the ground? Uh, I'll go ahead and test uh, a couple other of the new ones and, and the old one that I, the bad one that I have uh, out of circuit and see if I get something similar. All right, all three of the replacement flybacks uh, tested the same, which uh, I, I thought was good. But then for, you know, uh, uh, just for grins, I decided to test the old broken or bad flyback uh, um, that originally came in the upper monitor before I replaced it, you know, a couple years ago. And it too is showing, you know, round five, or in this case, uh, four volts uh, coming off of pin eight. Uh, but what's interesting is when I go to pin six, I have 14 and a half volts. And similarly at pins um, uh, 10 and 11, if you can see that. So I don't know what to make of this. Uh, I'm not sure which of these pins is the ground for the anode. Uh, is it 8? Is it 6? Is it 10? Is it 11? I don't know. I'm going to do some more research and uh, try to figure out, figure this out. All right. I did a bunch of research, and I can't find a data sheet or a pinout um, for this flyback of, uh, uh, um, at all. So uh, I decided to just jump in and start you know, testing things out. Again, I'm using this. Blue Ring Tester for high Q inductive components from Anatech Instruments. Um, it's called the Blue Ring Tester. And basically what it does is, I guess it sends a voltage uh, through a winding and sort of counts how many times it goes through. 
uh, a better winding in good shape is going to have a bunch of loops or echoes essentially or rings uh, through the winding whereas a uh, a bad winding is going to have fewer loops fewer rings or potentially none if there's a, a short um so i went through and and basically did a uh, put this table together uh, uh comparing the um uh the bottom good uh, monitor and flyback to the top uh, suspected bad one i do see quite a bit of differences um with the uh, the top one not having uh, the same number of, of rings on uh, certain pairs of uh, whether it's connecting a pin to the chassis or pin to pin. I used uh, pins uh, 11 and 10 as sort of references. Um, out of circuit, I've got all of the, uh, the new replacement flybacks and the old uh, flyback from two years ago. Uh, all of the um, uh, replacements all test exactly the same against each other out of circuit, obviously only being able to use pins 10 and 11 as, as reference. There were a couple of differences uh, with the um, uh, the bad uh, flyback, uh, really just comparing uh, pin 10 to pin uh, 6 sort of looks bad. So uh, we'll keep this out for uh, for now. And again, what this sort of how this works uh, is there's two leads that come off of this tester. Um, and let's say, let's clip them into uh, a couple of pins here. Put one on pin uh, 10, turn it on. Two flashing lights means it's on, it's working. Two flashing LEDs. And then we can go and we can touch each other pin and sort of see you know, what we're getting. Um, and then right there, uh, that's what, pin uh, six to pin 10. Uh, we're only getting you know, one, maybe two lights. And that's bad uh, on all of the other replacements. I'm getting three or four. Uh, then we go around and see how pin 10 to 11 has uh, all all uh, eight lights turning on, if you can see that. So anyway, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that, except that um, uh, the old bad uh, flyback does indeed look to be uh, testing um, bad. So uh, at this point, what I'm going to do next is... Um, I'm actually going to pull the hot, the horizontal output transistor, um, out of the uh, top monitor, the one that I think the flyback is blown. I'm going to pull that to test that out of circuit. It's really the only way to test uh, that component. Hots often go bad uh, together with uh, flyback, so we'll pull that and see how that's doing. Let's stick this old bad one back in this box. Turn off my blue ring tester. Get all this out of the way. Here's where the hot is connected uh, on the part side uh, of the chassis. I'm actually going to try to remove this without taking the chassis uh, out of the frame. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this works. I've got my Hacko desoldering iron. I'm going to start by trying to remove a bunch of the solder that's on the. Uh, there's two screws that kind of really mount the the hot to the. Um, to the chassis and then it has you go over there with solder so see if I can remove this without burning things looks pretty good I think I got all the solder off uh, now I'm going to try to pull uh, the hot without breaking something uh, there's two screws back here That hold the hot in and come on. It's almost almost out. There we go. The whole wow, the whole heat sink came out. Okay, well, yeah, I guess that's fine. Let's take the side out. All right. Kind of started to strip. This one, which is not good. There we go. So that's the heat sink for the hot. Two screws. I kind of torched that uh, solder pad, but hey, okay, we'll make do. Uh, and so here is actually this is a replacement uh, 2SD871. I'm sure I got this from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com, and I have an exact placement. Um, 
But let's go ahead and uh, now that we've got it out of out of circuit, uh, test this thing. Okay, so the way you test a hot is actually a little bit different than the way you test a normal uh, transistor, NPN, PNP, that sort of thing. Uh, so you put your negative or black lead from your multimeter, which is on diode test, on the middle or the collector uh, uh, of the or the frame of the uh, the trans uh, transistor, the hot. Uh, then you put your positive or red lead on either of the legs, and what you're looking for is somewhere between uh, 0.400 and 0.700 volts. Um, so with the negative lead on the collector, uh, with the right lead. Uh, we've got 0.494, okay, and on the left we've got point, whoops, 0.475 or so. Um, so that tells me this hot is not blown, which is both good and bad. Uh, good that it's not blown and bad that this isn't a, uh, a faulty part to blame for the issue. Let's try this other... Uh, this is the new uh, hot again from arcadepartsandrepair.com. See this one 0 0.499, 0 0.484. So basically reading the same. So again, uh, as expected, the new one uh, reads good as well. So I think our next step is to pull the flyback um, and attempt to replace that, test it out of circuit. Uh, we'll try a couple different things there. So, um, again, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm thinking of trying to pull this thing uh, without taking the chassis out of the frame. So let me look into that a little bit. All right, in order to get the flyback uh, out of here, I've got to uh, disconnect a couple of wires uh, from the neck board, which is extremely fragile. It's connected to the neck of the tube, which is the weakest part of the tube. So if you bump into this the wrong way, you can crack the tube, release the vacuum, crack the neck, release the vacuum inside the tube, and uh, then you've got a giant glass uh, paperwork, paperweight that can't be fixed. Uh, so this first wire, I'm gonna try to very carefully remove. All right, come on. There we go. All right, that's free. Uh, this other one is uh, sort of stuck on this uh, neck socket. So I'm going to very gently take the neck board off of the neck of the tube um, and see if I can remember how to open up this thing. Let me get a small screwdriver to try to pry that open. Okay, uh, to make my life easier, I pulled a couple more wires off of the... Uh, um, the neck board, I think one is ground and one is, I don't know, I forget. Um, I was able to get this cover off of the, uh, the neck socket on the neck board, uh, just with prying it back and forth with a little flat screwdriver. I remember that being a pain in the butt before. So it's soldered on. So let's try to very delicately, and this is such fragile work, uh, remove, uh, the solder from this so we can get the wire off sort of threw a little loop and bent over. Uh, if that's, it might be, that might be good enough. There we go, okay. So that's good. Um, we got that, those wires are free. Let's put this, the neck board back onto the neck just for the time being for our safekeeping so it's not dangling. We'll leave those other wires Attached for now. Uh, there's some screws. There's a shield to take off around the, the flyback itself. Let's see if you can actually see huh. picture now that I'm zoomed out. All right, all right. So I already took the uh, shield off of the around the neck. There's one still on the other monitor. Uh, let's get this cage off of from around the flyback itself. One, two, three. I don't know if this is it. I remember this all being a lot of work to take apart. Okay, easier than I thought. Let's get that out. Okay, that's free. Oof, 
Look at that. I think that was there like that before. The plastic little shield for the hot was that scorched uh, before. And then there's this other piece that, again, it's like a bolted shield for the flyback. All right, so like I said, all along I've suspected that it's the flyback that's gone bad here. You know, that burning smell. Um, ooh, what the heck is that? I don't know if that's something that came out of the flyback. Hmm. You always want to inspect it for physical damage, and that looks like something that I haven't seen. It looks like something oozing out. Let's come in for a closer look here. All right, so this is what I'm talking about here. I don't know what this gunk is. Looks like something has leaked out of the flyback. Um, I can't immediately see any other obvious issues, but man, that's gross. Not entirely sure what that is, but yeah, let's try to pull this flyback uh, out of the chassis. Call me a nut, but I am going to try to pull or desolder and remove the uh, flyback without actually taking the chassis off the frame. The fact that this panel comes out and exposes the parts side makes that a little bit more uh, straightforward, but uh, here goes nothing. I'm gonna use my desoldering uh, gun and try to desolder all 11 of these connections and uh, take it from there. All right, we are off of the chassis. Uh, again, a couple of those solder pads don't look fantastic, but I think they'll all work. So hopefully you can see this here. Why don't we go ahead and do the, use the blue ring tester and see what we get. All right, uh, let's see, what were we doing? Pin eight, or pin 11 and pin 10 were the reference pins I was using. All right, we're on pin 11, meters on, two, 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 and that's, uh, Six, okay, let's write that down. Um, six, two, 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 lights, I'm counting the number of LEDs, and then six, which isn't, that's marginal, I guess. Uh, that was right there, yep, six, two, 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 and that's, uh, five on 10. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that kind of matches sort of what we were seeing in, uh, when it was in circuit and definitely out of circuit is it's different from the, um, from the replacement flybacks. Uh, let's, now go to pin 10, which we've got. Test these, two, 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 none. Is that a shorted winding? Between uh, 10 and six? Between 10 and six, we have a shorted winding. Look at that, okay. Um, cool, all right. That's good, we're seeing things that are wrong. Two, 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 and then this should be, that's five, okay. So that's that's a good sign. 
hopefully you can see this here. So, uh, whoa, uh, comparing, um, <laughs> look at my chicken scratch. We do see a couple of differences here. Um, uh, most importantly, that zero there, uh, indicating a short, a dead short um, on one of the windings. So, okay, um, let's think about this for a second. Uh, I think this flyback is hosed. Um, looking at our, uh, again, it was that, that was the, that was the issue with the old, with the other, um, flyback that went bad. All of the windings or all of the links between pin 11 and the rest were good for the most part with the old one, the old, the original one that came on this monitor. Uh, and the one that was the issue with that one was, uh, between pin 10 and pin six, uh, which barely had any connection at all you know, low Q in the, using the correct terminology. And now with this other one that's gone bad, uh, yeah, pin 10 to pin six is a short, uh, pin 10 to pin 11 is lower than it should be. Uh, pin 11 to pin six is a little low. So, uh, yeah, I think we've got a bad flyback. Um, the previously, uh, the previous flyback in this, uh, monitor that we tested, uh, again, now out of circuit, um, I don't want to put back in. So why don't I grab one of these, um, uh, new replacement flybacks. We'll throw that in here and, uh, we'll give that a shot. So I think what I want to do first now is, uh, clean up a little bit and, uh, actually put the hot, uh, back in and, uh, man, I don't like how those solder pads look, but, uh, we'll get it in and we'll test it out and uh, make sure everything's okay. We've got the hot back onto the chassis. It is some of the ugliest soldering I've ever done because those pads are kind of shot here. Um, I've got the monitor kind of upside down with the neck dangling off the edge extremely precariously, so I have to be extremely careful not to bump anything and break it. Uh, uh, use continuity uh, test to check my work on the um, uh, on the hot, and I and I think we're good. Again, uh, soldering is ugly, but um, I think we'll work. Uh, I considered putting some jumper wires um, on the hot, but given that I think that's a, a high voltage part, um, I don't. Don't necessarily want to do that. Uh, again, test is continuity and it seems fine. So it's ugly. Nobody will ever see it. So sue me. Um, all right. Let's get the new replacement flyback out. And we've got to very carefully line this up so that um, it goes on properly. And again, just comparing the two here. Um, Oh, is that a crack? Yeah, I think that is, I don't know, see if you can see this. So now that we've got this old flyback out, uh, where are we? Here we are. Um, can you see that right there? That sort of yellow line. I think that is a crack in the flyback and some gunk has come out because we don't have that on the new one. So wild. All right. So let's uh, get this new one in there. Again, being super careful not to bump uh, the neck board while I do this. Get these wires out of the way. And, you know, this is difficult enough when the chassis is out and I'm just a glutton for punishment tonight, trying to make my job even more difficult than it needs to be. So, and the crazy thing is, you know, these <laughs> pins are never quite exactly where they need to be. Um, and there's also these plastic clips that don't really seem to be in exactly the right spot. So let me mess with this a bit, try to get the pins lined up, and we'll come back in a minute. 
okay, that really wasn't so bad. I was able to uh, get all 11 pins to line up in their holes and, and push through. Uh, there's two plastic clips that are holding uh, a flyback into the board, both one of which is broken on uh, this one. Um, but I think that was something I had to do to get that old one or that old new one, previous new one on in the first place two years ago. So I think we're in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and solder all 11 pins in and uh, then we'll put this all back together, cross our fingers and uh, see if we've got a working monitor. Okay, that looks pretty good. Sorry if you're hearing a little bit of background noise. I have a fan kind of blowing right at my face so that I'm not breathing this stuff uh, directly into my lungs. Let me grab my multimeter and we'll just test uh, continuity here to make sure we've got good solder. But I think we're in good shape. Oops. Um, flybacks are often a big pain in the butt. And uh, as long as I'm being careful not to mess with that neck board, that's good. This one comes around to there. This one comes around to there. Seven is a... Okay. All right. That's interesting. Nine. I was tracing this and trying not to lose my place. There we go. That one is a long journey. And 11 goes to. All right, I think those are supposed to be connected. So, um, so I think we're good here. Uh, let's put everything back together. Let's put the get the neck board back in uh, the way it's supposed to be. And like I said, put this in the game and see if we're in good shape. Okay, and now we got these two wires that we have to reattach from the flyback to the neck board. So these are actually different colors uh, than the previous one. They were both red before. And I think uh, now the one that goes into the, the socket is, um, is white. So it makes it easier to tell the difference between them. So uh, let's see. I guess that's kind of fine to dangle there. That wire is, well, let me see if I can gently sort of brace it in a way that hits it upright. Okay, put some solder on that. Yeah, I'm being very careful working around the, uh, the neck board. Or the neck at all. All right. Looks okay. We'll just test that real quick. I'm a little bit OCD, so I don't like doing things twice, although I'm happy to redo my work anytime I notice something wrong. But I want that to be right after I do it, not a long time after. All right, that looks good. And now we've got the the new white wire that will go into this sort of loop in the socket. You can hopefully see that. 
So we will loop that through. And kind of, oops, we'll bend that in there. Uh, I don't have <laughs> mule nose pliers, which is really what I want right now. Let's see if I got some of my toolbox over here. All right, I got my super old, not really small needle nose pliers, and hopefully these will do the trick. I got these when I got my first apartment. I was in the Air Force. So hopefully you can maybe kind of sort of see what I'm doing here. It's this is sort of delicate work. All right, that looks like a good loop. I'm gonna solder that in place. It ain't pretty, but it looks like a good connection. All right, now what? Uh, there were those two wires that I pulled. Get these out of the way. This yellow wire. Oh, shoot. Uh, probably should have taken pictures, but I think this one goes here. I think this one goes right next to the wire that came off the flyback. All right. And this black one from, is that the gauzing circuit around the monitor goes over here and I will double check both of those by looking at the other monitor real quick okay yep I was right uh, that yellow wire goes closest to the uh, flyback wire and the black one goes to the next to the is that the B drive pot so oh you know what I need to do is pop that cover back on to the um, net board socket here to cover up that wire from the flyback. Let's get this on again. Delicate, delicate, delicate. Okay, that looks good. How's that? Let's get this neck board back onto the neck, line up the socket, pop that on. Okay, uh, I think we're in business. Um, all we have to do left, I'm gonna put the cage, uh, two piece cage back over the flyback. That looks good. I'll double check all my wires. I'll put the protective cover back around the neck board and uh, we'll get this all put back together. All right, one quick thing to uh, show you here. I've got the flyback cage uh, back on the on the frame, except the, and I noticed this in the previous one, but it's even worse uh, now, is that the pots for the focus and screen um, on the flyback don't quite line up with the holes in the cage. If I move this down to really line up these two screw holes and put the screws in, I can't even adjust what's uh, uh, the focus pot. So I've got it kind of floating a little bit. Um, I think it'll be okay. It's a little bit bent out of the way so I can still get in there and uh, adjust uh, the focus with a TV adjustment tool. So I think the last thing to do here is to very carefully uh, put the uh, anode uh, back onto the tube. Um, just out of an abundance of caution, I am going to discharge it again. <clears throat> just my OCD overkill, whatever you want to call it. You can never be too careful, I guess. Laugh at me all you want. All right, alligator clip on the frame. Left hand back. Touching that. Getting that in there. All right, I think we're good. Better safe than sorry, all right? So let's get the uh, 
anode back on. I think you can see that. See what I'm doing here? Pulling back the suction cup. Just getting these rabbit ears in there. This, there's little wire ties. So I'm going to fish these wires through, get them all kind of squared away, and then we'll be ready to put this monitor back into the cabinet. Okay, I got the uh, everything put back together for the first monitor, the upper monitor. I got the lower shield put on the bottom of the um, chassis, so let's very carefully lift this and uh, put it into the cabinet. ledge on that side, around the ledge on this side. I'm just going to throw a couple of these screws in real quick just to hold it in place. It's hand tight for now, I just don't want this thing sliding out on me. Right. Wouldn't it be nice if this was fixed? But the pessimist in me always says there's going to be more to do. So let's reattach our four wires. We got power, we got video, and we got audio in and audio out. All right. Three and where is that? Okay. One, two, three, four. All right, plugging it into the wall, turning it on. We have HV. Do we have a picture? Holy smokes. Wow, look at that. Would you look at that? Whoops, we're going this way. Look at that. Looks great. I don't even need to adjust it. Let's get the sticky note off. Wow. What is that black bar on the side? <laughs> what is this? What is that black bar on the side? Oh my God. All right. Well, it's working. We've got a picture. It actually looks really good. So, um, let me mess around with this a little bit, and uh, but so far this is a success. Okay, I've done a bunch of research and unfortunately this is a flyback issue. Other people have had the exact same problem in the past with reproduction flybacks, these black vertical lines, bars on the screen. Um, I guess I should feel lucky that this repro flyback is working at all. Um, I tried a couple different things. I moved this chassis onto the other monitor and the problem followed the chassis. So it's definitely not a two problem. I uh, switched it back and then tried a, another one of these, you know, new replacement flybacks that I have, and it was the exact same problem. So, um, I think this is sort of the end of the road for this, uh, this chassis, this monitor. Uh, we're going to live with those black lines. Uh, obviously not ideal, but this is the upper monitor, which really just has the game selection screen and some instructions. It doesn't have the gameplay screen, um, so we'll live with it. Uh, eventually down the road, this flyback is going to go out. We'll try another one at that time, and hopefully that flyback will work better, but um, that's where we are. More bad news. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the bottom monitor, the one where you do get the actual gameplay, uh, that monitor has gone really, really dim and uh, it needs to be rejuvenated. I've got a rejuvenator. 
Uh, I've got a, a B and K 467, um, but it's not working. Uh, I was trying to calibrate it before uh, hooking it up to do the rejuve and uh, it's not working. I'm waiting on parts for that. So I'm not gonna be able to rejuve uh, the lower monitor in this video. So we'll have to save that for uh, a future video, which I will do. Um, so in the meantime, we're gonna do something kind of janky. Uh, we're gonna swap uh, uh, the chassis uh, or swap the uh, tubes in between these uh, uh, monitors. Um, so at least we'll have on the bottom on the gameplay screen, we'll have the bright monitor with the chassis that works. And on the upper screen, on the upper monitor, we'll have uh, the dim tube with the uh, the bad flyback or the flyback with the lines. Uh, like I said, this is kind of janky, but you know we're gonna make do with this just so I have a functioning game. Uh, and this is something similar to what ops operators would do uh, in the field back in the day. You know, people running arcades needed to keep these things running uh, so that they could make money. These were commercial coin operated machines. Um, so that's what we're gonna do uh, and sort of wrap up the video there. So I've got both monitors out uh, of the game on the table. They're laying face down. Uh, I'm actually using this old um, Empire Strikes Back, you know, blanket that I got at a yard sale for like a dollar just as a pad so that I don't scratch uh, the screens as I'm moving things around. I've already taken one, you know, I left the chassis in the frame, took the entire frame off. Uh, that's the, the lower monitor uh, back there. Um, so there's a couple things we need to do uh, to disconnect the monitor uh, from the frame, from the chassis in order to swap it. Uh, so I'm going to pull uh, first the degauss wire right there. Uh, there's a couple of sets of yoke wires that I need to disconnect. So very care carefully removing them. Okay. Um, I've already uh, uh, you know discharged the monitor, so we're good there. Uh, I need to very carefully um, remove the neck board from the tube. Nice and easy there. All right. And there's a, I believe this is a... Um, a grounding wire that I need to remove from the from the neck board itself. Come on, baby. Such gentle, delicate work back here. You don't want your hand to slip and knock the uh, knock the neck and crack the neck. So, okay, I think we're free and clear here. And then the last thing to do, uh, there are four bolts uh, at each of the corners that hold uh, the monitor to the frame. I've already removed uh, four of them, so I'm just going to get rid of this uh, last one here real quick. All right. Should come off uh, my hand now. Come on. A little bit more. There we go. All right. And this just holds, um, there's a bit of a frame brackets on the monitor itself. Uh, and this makes it nice and easy to sort of move the tubes between these monitors. So there we go. Uh, so now this should be totally free. I just have to kind of carefully navigate around uh, the gauze coil. I don't want to nick that and uh, that will cause problems. Uh, we do have a little problem. That degauss wire is stuck on this sort of wire tie. Come on, there we go. All right, so uh, tube is free. I'm gonna move it over here. Again, carefully navigating around the degauss sort of power wire and the degauss coil itself. There are some screws that stick out that I don't want to nick the um the cable with so why don't i uh, go off camera for a second finagle that and then i'll come right back okay sorry <laughs> i didn't want to subject you to having to watch me awkwardly struggle with that um we've got the chassis and the frame on the the new tube or the other tube um i was very careful not to nick uh the degauss coil uh, which is heavily insulated but that'll be bad news if uh i cut through that. Um, I got the four bolts back in place. So it's just a matter of kind of working in reverse and plugging everything back in. So I'll start with, again, I think this is the grounding or grounding wire uh, onto the neck board. I'll plug that in if I can get my uh, hands sort of fished through here. All right. All right, that's on. And I got to carefully navigate here 
get all this out of the way. Hmm, that would be bad news if that was tangled up. Those are all the wires I need to plug the monitor back into the game. All right, put this back on, socket onto the neck. All right, that looks good. Uh, let's see what else. I've got the uh, two sets of yoke wires. I'm going to be careful to remember how they went in before, so I put them in with the correct orientation. Uh, and the wires are kind of sort of go um, where they belong. They've sort of been in that position for so long. They're sort of bent a little bit that way. Okay. That's on, that's on. We have the gauze wire, which goes right here. Does it? Yep, okay. All right, and I think, I think that's good. So uh, I'm gonna do the same thing and move the other frame and chassis onto the first tube, uh, and then we'll be ready to put this back uh, put these back into the cabinet. All right, so obviously there was one more connection between the tube and the chassis that I had to make, which is the anode cup. So don't worry, I did uh, reconnect that on both monitors. Went ahead and installed both of them back in the cabinet. And I think we're ready to fire it up and uh, keep our fingers crossed. And, and hopefully we've got a uh, usable pair of monitors. So here we go. I hear the HV buzz, nothing is blown up. Let's see what happens. We've got something up top. We've got blue down below. Here we go, okay. So uh, need to make some adjustments, obviously. Oh, that's not good. Um, that might, I might have to reseat the, uh, the game there on the bottom, but we'll figure that out. We'll get these adjusted. Uh, let me take some time to do that. Um, I'll button everything up and then we'll come in and wrap up the video. But um, we've got two working monitors now. Um, it's not perfect. We got the, the dim monitor up top, although it doesn't actually look too bad right here. We've still got those black bars coming from the reproduction flyback. Obviously have some adjustments to make so that the, uh, the picture looks good, but uh, I think that'll do it for now. That'll work for now. Uh, so like I said, I'll button this up. We'll come back and wrap up the video. And we're back. Like I said, I spent a couple of minutes adjusting both monitors. Uh, neither of them are perfect, but they're about as good as I'm going to get them until I'm able to get my rejuvenator working again. Uh, I think both of these tubes actually could benefit from um, a clean and balanced by my rejuvenator. So once that's working, uh, we'll hit that in a future video. But yeah, uh, we've got a working game. So let's go ahead and pull this out of order sign off of the screen. So yeah, um, looks okay. It's playable. Uh, the monitors actually look better on camera uh, through the camera than they, than they do in person. Um, I wish both of them were a little bit brighter and obviously the top one uh, has the, the black bars on the side and this waviness up at the top, both of which I think are due to that sort of dodgy reproduction flyback, but the game's working. So that's where we're going to leave it for now. Um, uh, I think in the next video, what we'll do is try to get the uh, Tempest working again. And at that point, everything down here in the basement will be functioning uh, and we can move on to a restoration project out in the garage. So that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.